Hi and welcome. In this video, we will be talking about locking mechanism in SQL Server. What is locking? It is a way that SQL Server manages transaction concurrency and it ensures their integrity of data in the database as it forces every SQL Server transaction to pass the ACID test. And we have already discussed about these ACID properties in our last video. If you haven't watched that video, I will leave a link in the description. You can watch it from there. Okay. When a transaction imposes the lock on an object, all other transactions that acquire access to that object will be forced to wait until the lock is released and that wait will be registered with the adequate wait type. The lock on that particular object will be released either by committing the changes or by rolling it back to the initial state. Then the other transactions will be allowed to make required data changes. SQL Server has the locking hierarchy that is applied when reading or modifying a data is performed and locking hierarchy starts with database at the highest hierarchy level and row is at the lowest hierarchy level. Here we have a database. A user is trying to access this database and he wants to update a row inside a table. Let's say he is trying to update the first row. Okay. At the same time, another user is trying to read the contents inside this table. If user 2 is allowed to read this data, then it is called a data read because we don't know whether user 1 is trying to commit the transaction or he is trying to roll back the transaction. To avoid inconsistency of data, SQL Server has a locking mechanism that puts a lock on the resource where user 1 is trying to access and user 2 will be in waiting state until user 1 completes the transaction. Once the transaction is completed by user 1, the lock will be removed and user 2 will be no longer in waiting state and he is allowed to access the data. And at the same time, user 2 will also acquire a lock on this resource so that no other user can connect and modify the data while the reading is in progress. Why do we need locking in SQL Server? To manage transaction concurrency in multi-user environment. In case of single user environment, let's say we have three transactions and each transaction will be executing one after the another. In this case, we don't need any locking, but this is not a case in real time as multiple users will be connecting to the database and execute multiple transactions parallelly. And to manage this transaction concurrency in multi-user environment, SQL Server has locking mechanism. Locking is the default behavior of SQL Server. And to avoid inconsistency of data and transaction isolation. We have already seen about transaction isolation in our ACID properties video where each transaction is independent of every other transaction so that partial effects of one transaction should not be used by other transaction. I have a server and in that server I have a database. In that I have four tables. I am taking test table as an example. You can see the contents inside this table. There are total four records inside this table. Now a user has come. So I'm going to take another session here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to update a record. I'm not going to commit this transaction now. I'm just giving a begin trans statement and I'm executing this query. You can see the record updating has been started. So I don't know whether this is going to roll back or commit. Meanwhile, another user has come with the session ID 59 and he is trying to access the table contents. This query will be in executing state only until and unless the 52 session ID has rolled back or committed. The session 52 has acquired a lock on this resource or a lock on this particular row. And session 59 is still in executing state because this is trying to access the same table which is being used by session 52. To obtain information about locks in SQL Server, we use some dynamic management views. And this is one of the dynamic management view which will give information about active lock manager resource that are present in SQL Server. Along with this, we also have, I mean, we also use two more DMVs to know the wait time and to check the 
request status let me show you in ssms so here we are going to look at some important columns for in this dmvs let me execute here you can see the first uh, table or the first dmv it gives information about the wait type and the wait duration this is in milliseconds and the session id 59 is in wait state because it is being blocked by session 52 and you can see the resource description here and in the second second dmv you can see the status of the session 59 along with the wait time and uh, wait resource and what command is being run and the most important dmv is dm underscore tran underscore locks here you can see session 59 which is our block session it is having an intent shade lock and session 52 is having exclusive lock on the row okay so sql server has different lock modes like shade lock update lock exclusive intent lock schema lock and bulk update lock and uh, sql server puts lock on these resources row key page extent table file and database we will be discussing each lock mode and lock resource types in our next video along with the demo that's all in this video i hope you have enjoyed this video That's all in this video. Thanks for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe for more videos.